So uh, let me let me ask you this: We we came into the season with the almanac as Duke, the preseason number one team in college yeah. basketball. As we sit here today, having seen them just lose on their home floor, how worried are you about where they are, what they are, and who they will be in March? I mean, listen, I'm worried because I don't think and, – and, and, again, seeing it in person is different. I'm worried because they don't have a lot of, like, physicality, a lot of – they don't have a lot up front other than Husky. Filipowski is at his best when he's at the four. Let's face it. That's what he is. He's a four. He's well, not I, really a five, right? They need another big with him, and it's not Ryan Young. You know, they need a big that – like like a Umar Balo type where Flip can go out play in the perimeter a little bit more. Now he can do it offensively, but they just don't have that that other dude up front. I think they're missing one guy up front. I think McCain is going to – he's going to be there. I'm not worried about him. Proctor is going to get better. Like this – this is an off night for Tyrese Proctor. This isn't going to be the norm. So I, I, I mean, think you hope. Yeah, you I hope, think we right? saw like Proctor's like D performance, and, and and he's going to end up being an A B guard. Um, Roach is what he is. Like I think that's going to be Jeremy Roach. But I, I think again, can you get McCain and Foster? Those are going to be. And, and Mitchell was great early. He was so good early, setting the tone. And then I think, you know, again, he's not going to give you a ton of well, offense. What, what happened was, and I think it was a really smart decision by Tommy, and it was part of what I was mentioning with Ryan Young at the top, is that they 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 forced Mark Mitchell to be a decision maker and to try to be a playmaker, and they dared him to make shots, and he kind of fell into the trap a little bit. Like, one of the things that happened down the stretch was um, – I thought Duke played much, much better in the second half. I thought that you can make the argument they were probably the better team in the second half. Jeremy Roach made a bunch of big shots. Kyle Filipowski made a bunch of big shots. But every time you got to that one big critical possession, there was like a Kyle Filipowski, like he backed someone down and threw up a bad shot over his shoulder. There was the three Mark Mitchell took at the top of the key. There was one where the Mark crowd Mitchell never yeah, exploded. And they was, never got the crowd to explode. Yeah, they once. never had that moment they where they took they that lead. Right. And you were like, okay, now they've gotten over the hump. And part of that is credit to Arizona's defense. Part of that is, I would say, the issue that we've had with Tyrese Proctor and, and some of his decision making and his ability to get them into offense. And part of that is RC. I think the biggest issue with this team long term is the four spot. What do you do with Filipowski? What do you do with Mark Mitchell? Is Phil is, is Mitchell big enough to kind of be like a five defensively? I, and a I think you can. I, I was going to say I think Mitchell's physical enough that you can get away with line, matching him up on some fives. I think he's he's strong enough and athletic, athletic enough. They need his toughness defensively because he is the best defender on his team. Yeah. Part of Duke's problem is they got this free flowing offense now with these three guards. Five of their first six shots tonight were threes, mm -hmm. and they're playing outside in. And then, and then with those three guards, if you're starting three point guards, dribble penetration, put pressure on the rim. That's my, you know, last year when, when during a year when Kansas struggled, we should talk about Dewan Harris and say, hey, you're not even trying to score. That's what Tyrese Proctor looked like to me. Now he, he had shown some aggressiveness before. Then he gets in this game and he, he just went into that, hey, I just got to be the quarterback of this thing. He needs to be more aggressive if Duke's going to take the next step. He, he they, they don't need him just to be the quarterback. There's a little, I don't want to, like, too, too cool for school feels like the wrong way to phrase it, but there's a little bit of, like, passivity with him where it's yeah. kind of like you want him to be a little bit more aggressive. You know what I mean? You know what he looks like, and I, and I, and I don't know this to be true. I'm just, I mean, as far as in his past, when I watch him play, he looks like a guy that I say he is making the transition to a point guard. Like I wonder if he grew up playing a point guard because he's a big guard. He's six five. Know. He's always a big guard. Yeah, I and and, and I wonder that, that. because you're right. tonight he got, you didn't he, see any. But of it. but he when the coach is those. asking you, Shire's asking him to be more aggressive. He's telling this kid be aggressive, go score, go shoot. He's he's asking him to be this way, and he looks like a guy that just I don't know if he's come up being a point guard or not, or if he just think that's. But he's for a guy of his size and his ability, he just spends way too much time outside the three point line for a six five guard. Like he, he he's athletic enough to get up there, finish at the rim. He should live in the paint at his size. And and if he's not going to do that, then his team is going to struggle. They need him to be that next guy. Mm -hmm. Well, if he can drive and kick too. You're getting those guys open threes. Yeah, freshman. 
you know, instead of having to take contested. They need it because he, he can make it easier for everybody. They need him to be aggressive because now Mitchell will get offensive tip-ins or, or backdoor cuts. Filipowski gets some bunnies. Roach can get some threes. McCain can get a three early in there. He has to live in the paint. The, the concern that I have with that is I feel like he is a guy since he's 6'5". Like, he's not the quickest dude in the world. Like, he kind of gets by a little bit on, like, I understand how to use my body. I I understand how to use my strength. I understand how to use change of pace. And he ran into a team with a bunch of guards that were stronger than him, that could climb up underneath him, and kind of took away, like, what he does best. And if he's not going to be able to, like, do, like – they really Eric get up in him that thing? much, though? I, I, yeah, I'm with you. I, I think it was. I don't think I, they I, got I don't, up in him that much. I think he was just passive. I think he's just passive. I right. think. He, I think no, he's just. I think it's a combination yeah. of both. But like he couldn't. He couldn't do what he does best against guys that were. But a I bit don't think stronger he tried. So let me let me ask you guys. I think this. he has the ability to do it. Yeah. Let me let me ask you guys this. This performance, did it change what you think Duke ceiling can be? Have you changed your opinion no, of what they not are at all this season? Zero. They're still the most talented yeah, team. This, this is still the most talented roster mm-hmm. in college basketball. I, I, it, it's just they play so many different ways. And we talked about it. With this three-guard lineup, like tonight, Shire said this before, if we're going to win, we got a rebound. Boswell got eight rebounds. McCain, Roach, and Proctor combined for eight rebounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got out-rebounded by 14. So yeah, and then if you, so if you're not scoring, like for example, Parker was three for nine, one of six for three. You're not scoring. What are you doing? You know, and then yeah. the small. And, and it, you're putting it, too much pressure on Philip Pauls. You're putting to way rebound, too much on Philip Pauls and Mitchell and everything right. else. It's it's the guards got to rebound, and then Proctor just needs to be more aggressive offensively, just putting pressure on the rim. He's going to draw fouls and create opportunities for other guys. So coming up next for Duke is Michigan State and the Champions Classic. Michigan State has some of their own issues. Uh, heading into this season. That was the matchup that everybody kind of had circled, and it's like yeah. all of a sudden, you know what? Maybe the early are... game or the late game? Early? I, I don't I don't I remember, remember, but it was a top five matchup. I think matchup. it's the early game. I think it's it's not going to be a top five matchup anymore. It's an undercard. Yeah. It's a clear undercard right now. <laughs> <laughs> so who who wins? Give me a prediction. Who wins? Oh, uh, boy. Well, I mean, you know what? Let me, it now. Let, me, let me phrase it better. Game. Who, yeah. who is this game more important for, Duke or Michigan State? Probably Michigan State with the way they've shot the ball lately. Like, if they shoot it bad again, they're two for I mean, 31. imagine if they go, like, one for 15 again. RC, RC. <laughs> they, they, go out of his mind. They, were, they were third nationally what, in all 20? of college basketball. Third nationally in all of college basketball they're last like three season in three-point shooting. They? They they're three? two for 31. Two they're the first team in 15 years, first division one team, to go two for 31 in the first two games. And we thought they bad. were, like, a good shooting team. They were third of the country last I mean, year. And they returned almost everybody. I'll push back and say know. this, that it's equally as effective game against Duke psychologically because you're going against another physical high major, yeah. High yeah. major team yeah. experience. Oh, agreed. Agreed. Well, no, I, I think it's even. I think I, it's I, awesome. dude, both, both team needs it. Like, yeah. whoever loses needs, that is in trouble. The sky is going to be falling. Yes. I, we're going to have so many clickbait headlines yes. on the field of 68. The, sky, the season yes. is whoever over. Whoever loses it. Cancel it. The season is over. According Good, to our Jeff, no. Jeff Goodman, <laughs> Jeff Goodman is going to put Tom Izzo on the hot seat. 